All right, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever time that you are watching this video, you know who I am. And if not, my name is Richard Taylor. Coming back with a little bit of true air concerning uh, the state of the current situation, once again, in Wayne County Public Schools. Now, as you see the title, uh, most recently, I think it was Friday, uh, there was a rivalry high school basketball game. Uh, the Goldsboro Cougars against the Eastern Wayne Warriors, two of uh, Wayne County's most beloved and rivaled athletic programs. Now, when this game came about, uh, I think, probably two or three weeks before the evening game. Actually, after the first rival, rival game, I think all of the tickets were bought out. And before the game, I think on Friday, someone posted that all the tickets are uh, bought. So you're going to have to pay at the door. Now, I didn't attend that game, but I think it was a very close game. I think the score was either 71 to 72 or 70 to 71, something. It went down to the wire. Now, I did go to the first game. First game was at Goldsboro High School, and that game was sort of a blowout. I think I left at halftime because, you know, once for one, it wasn't a very uh, close game, but also for two, it was extremely packed, extremely hot. And, you know, after the game got out of hand, I was like, yeah, I, I can leave now. Uh, and both of those games, the one I attended, you know, it was a packed house standing room only uh you know a lot of people a lot of alumni a lot of older people younger people a lot of people from the community a lot of people attended that game and as well i assume as the past game this friday there was a lot of people there uh, and uh after the game i you know saw saw a few posts um you know read some you know complaints about the referees letting the kids play and uh, you know, this, that, or the other. And every time that these games happen, there's always a lot of commentary on social me media uh, that shows that people are very interested, they're very vested, you know, in these games. And I definitely know why. You know, I played sports at a high school level. Um, thought I was pretty good, you know, until, you know, other things begin to take my attention. And I understand the importance of sports for the high school uh, student athlete and you know I emphasize the word student athlete because they're supposed to be students first but unfortunately uh, in this day and age and also you know in past days and ages the emphasis has been placed more on the athlete rather than the student now, once again, athletics are very important in developing, you know, the uh, teenage adolescents, you know, with teaching things like discipline, uh, teamwork, uh, ex accountability, responsibility, um, you know, coercion, uh, cohesiveness, working together, uh, respect, dignity, character. You know, there's a lot of social skills that could be groomed and imparted to the youth in the engagements of sports. Now, on the other hand, if too much attention is being paid, you know, to the athletic realm or, you know, uh, too much emphasis is placed on being a good athlete, you know, being a good scorer, being a good runner, being a good, you know, hitter. And that is what, you know, you place or uh, you identify the child's identity in. Then um, what happens after that high school career is over? And the other things and the other skills have not been groomed to such an extent. Things like, you know, reading, and, you know, writing and math and arts and science and, 
you know, languages, those things have not been nurtured to allow the student to have more options in their life. And, you know, we have to be honest, no matter how good a high school player is, you know, whether he's, you know, made the all area team all four years of his uh, high school career, you know, whether, um, you know, he's the top leading scorer in school hi history. Unfortunately, the chances of high school athletes making uh, the pro or even the division one college level are in many times less than 0.02% for, you know, being drafted in the NBA. And I think it's like maybe 1.5% of all high school football players uh, will make it until the pro or collegiate level. Now you think about that number, very, 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 very small. And you can actually, you know, go throughout the annals of Goldsboro uh, High School Athletics, uh, where you can, you know, you can pretty much name everyone who's made it to, uh, you know, a major Division One school and even, you know, a pro athletic team. I, you know, I heard about uh, Michael Evans uh, in the in the early seventies. You know, we had. Um, you know, I think Tito Wooten was one of the first people, you know, I knew, heard about, um, you know, the present era. You know, we had the David Thornton and we had the uh, Jaron Reed and Jimmy Grahams, you know, Kobe Whites. And, you know, there's a few others uh, that, you know, that I that I probably left out. So um, in Goldsboro, for, for Goldsboro being such a small area, that is pretty good. You know, but however, on the flip side, we can think about all of those top athletes who, you know, were touted as the best thing smoking as, you know, as, you know, we know that they are going pro because they're just so good. And um, when their high school or collegiate careers ended, then we can see the downside of them not being prepared to not make it unto the next level, whether that level was college or whether that level was the NBA. And once again, we can go down the line and we can see, you know, how many of our area's top athletes uh, ended up on the streets, uh, ended up selling drugs, ended up in prison, ended up, you know, in prison for murder. Some even ended up murdered some ended up for long prison sentences. You know, let's be honest, some are even crackheads, you know. And, of course, we would say the majority of those high school elite athletes more often than not ended up on the wrong side of the tracks than in the NBA or the NFL. Now, once again, that's not saying all of them ended up on a downward spiral, some of them went on, you know, to become productive citizens outside of the NBA. So uh, my reason for making this video is once again, I, I see a lot of, you know, emphasis on, you know, high school athletics. You know, uh, after that, I gained the other day, I saw one, you know, particular individual, uh, which, you know, once again, I... I I just think differently. So the, the, the one individual was talking about, okay, now it's time for the state championship. Both teams are going to go to the state championships and, you know, let's get ready for that. Uh, I know the year before last or last year, Goldsboro High made it to, you know, either the state semifinals or the state finals. And, you know, they lost to a team and, you know, people were kind of upset, criticizing one of the players and, you know, uh, you know, the coaches and everything like people like people were traveling, you know, to the to 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 the, you know, venue, which is all well and good, which is fine, you know, support the youth. But where is that same energy, you know, when we have things that are about to come up, you know, the Friday after next, which is when and let me not say the Friday because I'm looking at the wrong calendar. 
uh, the, the 29th is the day when uh, superintendent, and that will be a Thursday, the superintendent, Mark Wichard, is going to address the community about him switching a lot of the students around. Much of that switching is going to affect some of these high school athletes at Eastern Wayne High and Goldsboro High. And I want to see, you know, if there's going to be as much involvement in the scholastic or the logistic area of what's going on in the school system than it is in the athletic part of the school system. You know, once again, there's there there's a place and a time for athletics, but when the focus is on athletics and um, there is individuals who are highly talented in athletics and, you know, they have high aspirations, when those aspirations don't come to fruition, uh, there is a deep, deep, deep drop, honestly, and we have to be honest, that a lot of players, a lot of kids, a lot of, you know, teenagers don't come back from because, once again, they haven't been prepared. You know, they haven't been, you know, properly educated on the slim chances it is that they will make it out uh, of Goldsboro through dribbling a basketball or, you know, running a football or hitting a baseball, things of that nature. So um, it's obvious that, you know, children these days have – you know, probably a hundred more times chance of being a doctor than being a high school, I mean, being an NFL or NBA basketball player, NFL athlete. They have a hundred times better odds of being a lawyer, of being a, you know, a successful businessman, a successful, mu you know, well, musician is, is, goes in with the entertainment thing. But, Children in high school have much more higher probabilities of succeeding in life than as a professional athlete. And so when we look at these and when I look at these, um, you know, all the attention, all the, you know, the back and forth on online and, you know, the commending of kids once again, which is good. You know, I think a lot of that energy uh, should be... Uh, directed towards once again their learning capacity you know a lot of the you know the, the complaining about the refs in the last game uh, should equal the complaining of you know the students not being able to get to school on time because of the lack of running buses should equal you know the 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 outrage of the low test scores and you know we should be you know seeing okay what are y'all doing to improve these test scores at Goldsboro High, at, you know, the other schools as well. You know, so that that's always kind of stuck out to me within the last few years, especially, you know, starting with, you know, the, the protests from Ka Kaepernick years back. And, you know, we noticed how much attention, how much focus that, you know, the community spends on sports. You know, we... You know, we can tell you LeBron's average for the playoffs in the last, you know, in the last six playoff, six playoff games of each of the last six years. You know, but we can't, you know, tell you the average SAT scores in the local school or, you know, comparative stats as, as that. So it almost mirrors what the um, Roman general said. I think he said to, to, to Caesar, he said, give them bread and circuses and they'll never revolt. And so in, in that caption, the circuses was, you know, the gladiators. You know, in the Roman times, they used to put gladiators, big strong men in arenas and they would loose tigers on them and, 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 and wild animals and have them fight the animals to the death or even fight each other to the death and that was entertainment for the masses. And it seems that that is still a tactic to keep us, and I mean us, I mean the masses, kind of stagnated and, you know, focus on, you know, 
these games, which once again, they have their place in society, but these games should not outweigh the scholastic achievements, the scholastic um, learning aptitude of these athletes. But unfortunately, we all know it does. And, and we have to be honest with ourselves to be able to understand, you know, what this actually does. Now, once again, I, I can think of countless, countless high school all-stars uh, who fell by the wayside when their uh, high school athletic career ended after high school or it ended prematurely in college or it ended after college and not making it to that next level. You know, when, when you've been, and once again, this, this has been documented either in movies or documented, when you've been touted as the next best thing and you get to that and all everyone is telling you is you're going to make it in sports. You're going to make it in sports. You're going to make it in sports. So you don't take time to study. You don't take time to read. You don't take time to um, engage in your inner creative spirit. And then when that does not happen, you know, you're lost. You know, you're lost without a backup plan. And, and then everyone who's been touting you alone, who, who has been pushing you alone, then, you know, they're nowhere to be found as well. So that is, once again, something that, you know, we have to, in my opinion, and y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments, we have to shift our focus uh, sometimes. Uh, because, while once again, while these rivalry games are good, while, you know, a lot of these high school players are good, um, but what are they getting in the classroom? What are, what are they going to get in when, you know, the odds typically show that, you know, nine times, you know, 9.9999999 times out of 10 that their last uh, athletic game is going to be in their high school senior year. So what are they, what are they going to get uh, in supplement or in place of that? What kind of skills have they been developing? What kind of tools that have they been sharpening uh, to handle that phase of life when it comes? So um, this is just something to think about. Once again, we, we know what um, is going on in our public city school. There are a lot of complaints. Yet and still, once again, I see more complaints about, you know, the referees at a high school basketball game than, you know, the fact that Goldsboro High School still doesn't have a principal <laughs> with, you know, in about six weeks or, you know, Oh, yeah, almost six weeks, almost a month and a half. They've been operating without a principal. So where is the parent involvement in that? You know, but we still go to those games. We sell out those games. You know, we yell and scream. But, uh, you know, that's just something, once again, maybe maybe I'm overthinking it. But I've been, you know, I've been seeing this this, this discrepancy, this, this one-sidedness between athletics and ap academics where you know we hold athletics much higher than we hold academics now, i don't know if that is a social conditioning or engineering aspect but um i think this is really something that that needs to you know be redirected uh, especially when we're talking about the lives of you know the future you know and and if they're not getting what they need but they're just being pushed around you know i, re I remember uh, when I was in high school, like, you know, a lot of the athletes, they didn't have to go to class. Like, you know, uh, you know, the coach would have them, you know, in the gym shooting, <laughs> you know. And, you know, once again, a lot of those those players from, from my area, you know, kind of, you know, I see them kind of on the streets today. And, you know, they are they are not in the best of productivity. Some of them are not. Uh, productive uh, in the manner that you know I think they they, they they have the capacity to be and you know it just I, in my opinion it may be once again due to the lack of preparation outside of school um, when you know their their talented careers you know came to an abrupt end and you know for lack of you know better uh, direction or preparation, you know, they did not um, know how to handle that transition. But 919, 
587-7782. Y'all tell me what y'all think in the comments. Like and subscribe. Share the video. All of those things. But I thank y'all for tuning in. God blessings. Peace.